What's up everyone, in this video I'll be going over what I like and dislike about every puppet combo villain. These villains come in all shapes and sizes so I figured it was finally time I came on here and gave you all my opinion on what I think about all of these beloved killers. I need to mention that this is my personal opinion on, on all of the killers so please don't get offended or don't take any of this too seriously. Uh, and of course I would love to hear what you guys think about you know all of these people so comment down below what you guys think. Alright so starting off with Larry, one thing I really like about Larry is the fact that the man speaks no words, he doesn't have any thought, it's just straight murder. I also love the way he looks in Christmas Massacre. Obviously he got the underwear and stuff, but also when he gets his Santa costume, that also looks pretty cool, it's very iconic. Uh, another thing I like is the fact that he's in three separate games. There's not that many puppet combo villains that have multiple games. The most I think is probably two, and that's like Billy and, and, Driller, and the Driller Killer, but... And one final thing I really do like about Larry is the fact that his games have a ton of costumes, so it's, you know, very customizable. Unlike other killers that, that only have one look, Larry has a ton of different looks, you know? Some things I dislike about Larry are how unserious his motives are. It's not exactly clear why he started killing people or why he's this mass murderer. I think the earliest traces you can sort of look back on is it's how Larry was not allowed in the in the in the Christmas party in, in in Christmas massacre. If that's his reason, just because he wasn't invited, that's crazy because he's killed like hundreds of people just because he wasn't invited to some party. And then like 20 years later, the man still like it wants revenge. Like that's insane. So next up we have the tall man from day seven. So some things I really like about the tall man is that he stalks the player, which I think is pretty cool. Uh he only appeared one time, one time for the jump scare, and then another time time is part of a cutscene, so we barely even see him. I know some of you might not like that part of him, but I like that part of him because the, the less you see of something or someone, the more like impactful it is whenever you do see it, you know what I mean? And uh, finally, the last thing I like is the fact that he might not even exist. Like, yeah, Terrence might have just imagined this villain the whole time. He really might not even exist at all. So one thing I dislike about the tall man is the fact that kind of, you know, the same as Larry, we kind of don't know his motives or why he attacks our player. Player. I think the safest assumption we can make, which is based off the fact that he doesn't exist, is just that he's just a uh, part of uh, Terrence's imagination. Obviously, Terrence is trapped in the back rooms for God knows how long, and uh, you know he's losing his mind slowly. He's starting to hallucinate things, so that's definitely could be part of the reason why. But yeah, we don't really know that much about him, and there's not really that much explanation or anything afterwards that explain his backstory. So I kind of don't like how we don't. That's really it. That's all we know about him. Next up on the list, we have the Driller Killer. So some things I really like about the Driller Killer is that he is easily one of the scariest killers. Like even just off his looks alone, this is just super scary. I think so many of you guys can agree. The Driller Killer is just genuinely scary. Not even his jump scare sounds or whatever, just, just how he looks, you know? I also like how of all killers, he's definitely unique in the fact that he is still kind of a child trapped in the body of a man. He's very childlike, which adds this disturbing factor to his, you know, overall aura. Another thing I like is that he is in two games. He is in Nightwatch and he is in Power Drill Massacre. And one final thing I like is that he is in the forest. A lot of these other killers, they're in like houses or they're in rural places, rural areas. But the Driller Killer seems to be one of the only ones that is just straight up in the forest, which is one of the scariest places to be at, guys. It's one thing where you're getting chased throughout a city like in Night Ripper or you're getting chased throughout a town like in uh, Blood Wash or something like that. <laughs> but the Driller Killer, that man is in the forest, bro. That shit is scary. You could go camping and that man is on your cheeks. Like, I, I, that's way too scary. I don't like that. So some things I dislike about the Driller Killer is the fact that we never figure out why exactly he's deranged. There is some conclusion that he is connected to the Sunshine Orphanage or something like that and he was abandoned or something like that. I don't really know, but for the most part, we don't really know why he's as deranged as he is, why he's mentally stunted. And one more thing I dislike about the Driller Killer is the fact that we never get to see him roam around. Other killers like the Butcher and the Nun, you can kind of troll them and, and walk behind them. You can see the paths that they take and stuff and they don't notice you. But the Driller Killer, the only times you ever see the Driller Killer is either at the end of Night Watch where he comes and grabs your cheeks out of nowhere or in Power Drill Massacre where the only times you see him is when he already catches you and knows where you are and he's chasing you. Uh, I would I would love to see a game, maybe like in a future version of Power Drill Massacre where we can straight up just see the, the Driller Killer walking around trying to look for us. But uh, for right now, we don't, we don't have that, which is unfortunate, uh, but I would like to see that one day. 
Next up on the list, we have the Butcher. So one thing I like about the Butcher is that he is easily one of the smartest villains. I already said this in multiple videos, especially in the Puppet Combo Tears video. The Butcher is very, you know, aware of his surroundings. He has camera set up, bear trap set up. He locks people in cages. You know, he he's very... He's very much a good killer, <laughs> I guess you can say. I love that he is connected to the CFV, probably the most out of any other killer right beside Billy. I like how he's the one that keeps the, the bunker creature at, you know, he's the one that, not, not take care of it, but like, you know, he's the one that kind of just controls it. He has it in his basement and stuff, which is crazy. And one final thing I like is that of all puppet combo killers, the butcher is the one that uses the most weapons. He uses a cleaver, he uses a chainsaw, he uses knives, he uses like, like a ton of different things bear bear traps you know stuff like that which is such a nice change of pace obviously other killers have their iconic weapons that that make them that iconic but he himself is iconic so it doesn't matter what weapon he's holding you know there's sometimes at the end of the game where he chases you with a chainsaw which is awesome uh there's other times where he's chasing you with his cleaver that he uses to chop up people in his kitchen you know so it's it's pretty cool one thing i dislike about the butcher is the fact that he tortures his victims and captures them this is kind of a similar dislike i'm gonna have for other villains but i you know it's kind of messed up dude like you could just be working a regular ass job just minding your own business and boom took snatched like bro like that's kind of messed up that's literally what we saw in night shift which is the prologue to stay out of the house uh deborah i think is the main character of night shift she was just doing her job she wasn't doing anything wrong bro she was just doing her job minding her business and she got took bro she got took which is pretty messed up i would hate that dude imagine just working your job and just think you're you're in a cage somewhere fucking 50 miles away you don't know where you are and there's a crazy butcher trying to get your cheeks like that's not the move bro so very next on the list we have the booty creek cheek freak so one thing i like about the booty creek cheek freak is the fact that he's a very unserious villain uh he's almost a joke villain you know kind of comedic honestly i mean the man just wants your cheeks bro like that's literally the only thing that he wants uh you know his origin's pretty funny too i think i read somewhere that he was just a regular man and he was in the he was taking a dump somewhere and uh he got stuck in the toilet and because of that he later on died from starvation or something and then he haunts like toilets and poop and cheeks ever since which is which is a wacky origin story but it's definitely it's definitely pretty funny that's you know that's part of the reason why i like him so one thing i dislike about him is how easily he was taken down as paranormal and you know mythical as he is all you needed to do was just collect like bones or something and and you also you could push him away with fucking spray fucking i don't know what the hell was going on but yeah it, he was taken down very easily which i don't like i was hoping maybe there's some more steps but all you really do in the booty cheek creek freak is just go around collecting bones and you flush the bones down the toilet and for some reason that's enough to kill him so next up on the list guys we have the monster from no one lives under the lighthouse so very quickly i just want to add this video will most likely come out before i upload that video but i just recorded that video and it's, it's probably gonna be an hour long so it might take me a fat minute so yeah just don't worry guys that gameplay will come out for those who do want to watch it so one thing i like about the monster we see in no one lives under the lighthouse is how otherworldly he feels you know other villains from puppet combo especially they're very human like they're very grounded some of them are regular humans or some of them are kind of you know paranormal but they still take the form of a human being but the monster we see in no one lives under the lighthouse is very much straight up a monster uh he has multiple arms he crawls around on like all fours or something he leaves ink behind and stuff he's very very otherworldly Worldly, like very very otherworldly it feels like that killer is part of some cult or something you know what i mean like it's very alien like it's very weird which i really like one thing i dislike about this monster is that we don't really get to see that many abilities i mean the only thing we get to see from it is that it chases us and it leaves behind some type of ink some type of uh you know black material i don't know what but i wish we got to see more abilities from this monster uh if you guys know anything about no one lives under the lighthouse towards the end of the game there's actually a part where you start going deep into like uh some very weird creature world i just think they could have done a lot more with the the monsters you know with their abilities but it's okay that that game is more story and linear which is you know pretty awesome so i guess there's not too much to hate so next up on the list we have billy 
So one thing I like Billy is his appearance. Billy to me is, call me weird, but he's one of the more cuter killers, you know? I, I don't know why. I like his mask, his clown mask. I like his outfit. I like the way he runs and the way he shoots his gun. Like, it's pretty funny. I like the fact that he's a regular human being. He's not paranormal in any way. He's just a regular dude. And I also like the fact that he uses a gun, probably the only puppet combo villain to use a gun or a weapon of that nature. Uh, other villains use, uh, you know, very up close and personal uh, weapons, you know, such as uh, cleavers, knives, and uh, stuff like that. But Billy, that man will shoot you down from 50 miles away, dude, that, which I find pretty cool. One thing I dislike about Billy is the fact that we never, or at least I don't think we've ever found out why or how he got connected to the CFV. In Feed Me Billy, we see that he already is very indoctrinated into that cult. He has very weird CFV stuff on his TV and stuff, but we never really find out through notes how or you know exactly why he's connected to the cfv uh which i which i kind of dislike i wish there was more backstory to billy but uh i mean you can't really ask for a ton you know so i mean it's all right Alrighty. so next up we have slaw from next up we have slaw from rewind or die so i love how comedic he is he is one of the only villains i think to ever actually talk in the game he laughs at you and stuff. He makes jokes. Well, I don't think he makes jokes, but he kind of plays with you as the player. He's not super serious. He, he just chases you and he's, he's, you know, very funny in that way. So one thing I dislike about Slaw is his motives. He, he really doesn't have any reason at all to be attacking and murdering people. He's perfectly sane. He is perfectly capable of running a store as we see at the end of Rewind or Die. Spoiler warning, you have been warned. He's actually Tony, which is the guy that you work with at the beginning of Rewind or Die. So it's not like he's insane or anything. The man is perfectly capable of being normal and acting normal. But for some reason, he just starts killing people and stuff. I have no idea why. I think maybe it's because he attacks people that doesn't that who don't return the, the videotapes. But that is such a weird fucking motive. Um, and I could be wrong about that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I don't know why he kills. He's completely sane. He's completely normal. He just likes doing that for some reason very weird so next up we have dylan from deadly knight one thing i like about dylan is his appearance he is actually genuinely very scary if you do a close-up of his face pause if you do a close-up of his face you can kind of see his eyes he has no eyelids they're perfect circles which are which is very unnatural and very scary his face i've said this multiple times looks like he literally just face planted onto like a grill and it just burned his face for like five minutes uh and he just he just doesn't look he looks very scary right which i do like i like his weapon too who i love sickles for some reason and i can trace that back i'm gonna go a little bit of tangent here uh if you guys ever played call of the dead from from call of duty black ops one it was a zombies map one of the weapons you can get is a sickle you can also get that in ascension but it's a sickle and i love how different it was from the bowie knife and that's why i love sickles as a weapon personally which is why you know i like that part of him but enough yeah and another reason too is that he's also mute he doesn't talk i know other killers don't talk but they don't talk because it's for gameplay purposes but in you know dylan actually legitimately is mute he legitimately does can, is not able to talk because of you know he's mute or whatever so i do like that part about him that's very cool to me you know I, for some reason so one thing i dislike about dylan is the fact that he's a very repetitive killer his sounds and his jump scares get extremely repetitive uh very quickly they're scary don't get me wrong but they get very you know stale after a while and i know some of you guys are gonna be like oh but blind that's that goes for literally all the other killers but i've said this before for some reason dylan just gets really boring after a while like i could play that game and and get scared for like the first 10 minutes but everything afterwards is i'm just looking at it with a straight face you know so one thing i like about the meat cleaver mutilator is the fact that we don't know whether he likes scaring people or if he actually thinks he's a wolf like i didn't dive too deep into the backstory of meat cleaver mutilator so i'm sure there are reasons as to why he is the way he is but i kind of just like the thought that he just thinks he's a wolf instead of being a killer and actually just wants to terrorize people because that's just the nature of wolves my dislike which again i could be proven wrong please comment below if there's actually a backstory but it's the fact that he doesn't have any backstory like literally zero background information i think for the most part uh, again please comment if there's backstory but i couldn't find any i don't know what his motives are where he came from or anything like that me cleaver mutilator just kind of starts off off rip with him chasing you and stuff i don't know why our players in that building even to begin with too so yeah it's pretty weird so next up we have the night ripper from 
well the night ripper so one thing i really like about the night ripper is his appearance I, I really love the way he looks he is very dapper he has his whole fit on he has his little top hat he got the duck mask uh it's a very iconic puppet combo killer i'm sure many of you guys can probably agree on and i also like where he lives and where he terrorizes which is new york city other other villains they come from other states and stuff which is cool but you know a killer in new york city is very awesome to me for some reason i think that's because i grew up in in nyc so i kind of have a, a more of a personal attachment to the night ripper so one thing i dislike about the night ripper is the fact that he only targets women i mean it, it, it just seems very unfair for him to target just women and and not just women it's prostitutes and just women alike which is kind of messed up to me well not kind of it's very messed up to, for him to just be misogynistic for no reason uh, i'm not sure why he attacks just women but it's pretty messed up i mean he should probably pick on people his own size you know so yeah i don't i don't like the fact that he targets only women we love women here on the blind fire channel okay so next up we have father fretstein from night at the gates of hell so i'm gonna be reelington as hell to you guys i've only watched gameplay and that was probably two years ago at this point so i could be wrong so just just hear me out one thing i like about father fred scene is his powers and abilities i think please tell me if i'm wrong but he's able to summon portals and stuff he's able to summon the dead and and send armies of zombies to to the player i think please again please comment if i'm wrong i i really don't know too much about that game and the thing i dislike again please tell me if i'm wrong is the fact that he kind of comes out of nowhere other villains have notes and letters scattered throughout that kind of you know tell you oh well watch out there's this very murderous dude but again it could be wrong because i never played it but i just from what i've seen he kind of comes out of nowhere I don't know if I'm wrong about that, but yeah, I mean, on to the next one. Next up, we have Nicholas Burr from Babysitter Bloodbath. I think the most obvious thing we can all like about Nicholas Burr is the fact that he is the first puppet combo villain, like original puppet combo IP villain. I've already mentioned this before, and I'm sure many of you guys already know that Puppet Combo was trying to make a Michael Myers type of game, but they used his model and they couldn't, you know, continue using his model because you need to obviously respect the copyright, you know, and you can't use his model. He ended up making Nicholas Burr as a replacement for Michael Myers, and obviously, it's he's been iconic ever since. Uh, another thing I really like is the fact that he has a very, you know, long and cool backstory. Not cool in like the the killing sense but just cool in the fact that it's very long very fleshed out uh, i'm not gonna go too deep in this story obviously because i'm sure there are people who are more qualified to talk about his story than me uh if you guys go on the puppet combo wiki and just sort of read his backstory you guys can see how long it is and how you know detailed it is which is really cool we you know this is one of the only killers we actually get to get a full you know gist of of kind of why they are the way they are and how they came to be and one thing i dislike kind of relates to this is that in the books his backstory is actually really messed up uh he's actually a terrible person he killed his family and he killed his his infant which is insane like that's actually that's so messed up I, I don't like that at all so next up on the list we have the cannibal killer from cannibal abduction so one thing i like is that he is the son of the crazy old man that we see at the beginning and intro of cannibal abduction you guys can kind of piece together Together, the story but the killer is not actually the grandpa i thought for the longest that the old man that we encounter in the intro of cannibal abduction was the killer that we ended up seeing and, and that was chasing us and stuff but it's actually not i believe the villain is actually the son of the old man called philip which is something you can kind of gather through notes found throughout the game. Uh, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that we don't see the old man again. This is just a completely separate villain that's kind of related to the old man. So some things I don't like about the cannibal killer is the fact that they feed dead bodies and stuff to Daisy, which is the dog that we see in the game. Man, you can do you. You can eat whatever y'all want to eat. You know, I'm not going to judge. They can eat whatever they want to eat, but don't don't make the dogs and the animals eat that bull shit you know what i mean like don't don't force that upon the dogs and stuff i also don't like how i think it was the old man not really this killer but the fact that they throughout the game you get notes from the very youngest son i think 
and that son actually ended up uh offing himself because the old man and the cannibal killer kind of forced him to to end up dead they they tried forcing the son to uh cut off his limbs and stuff and feed the creature that we see at the end of um cannibal abduction and yeah if you guys ever played that game uh up in the attic there's actually a little locked room and that is actually where the son or the little kid was trapped in uh so yeah i kind of don't like how they forced that little kid to end up you know you know offing himself which is pretty messed up so next up we have santa from planet of the bloodthirsty santa so one thing i really like about you know the santa or also known as the red demon is that it's a nice spin on santa for the most part most people have a very good view of santa he's this very jolly you know mythical being that that only provides joy and and fun to to kids from all over the world you know providing them with presents and stuff i know a lot of people have a good association with santa and christmas and stuff so it's kind of it's kind of cool how puppet combo flipped it and made santa this very unlikable person and i will explain why he's very unlikable in my dislike reason i also like his weapon of choice which is an axe which is so fucking awesome you know he i think he is probably one of maybe another but probably the only villain to use an axe which is a very scary and deadly weapon to use so some things i dislike about santa is the fact that he slaughtered and wiped out an entire population of elves for seemingly no reason at all if you guys played and read the notes scattered throughout the game you will see that he actually abused and tortured many of the innocent elves and eventually led to all of them dying off this is actually why the only elves you see in the game are the evil ones because those are mutated elves that ended up you know just being being influenced and and shaped by santa uh he even did the same with the goddamn reindeers if you ever made it to the end of the pl the planet of the bloodthirsty santa demo you will see that there is actually a, a reindeer head used as a as a searchlight which is so messed up like are you kidding me he, yo that's so messed up why would he do that to the reindeers like they're so innocent next up we have the womb ripper from Bloodwash. so some things i really like about the room ripper is that they actually have a very reasonable backstory for why they are deranged i'm not going to explain fully but to, to cut it down really short uh they were actually the room ripper is actually named uh, samantha and she was pregnant she was actually set up and, and burnt alive by a guy and because of the fact that she was you know trapped in a fire she lost her baby and stuff so you know she kind of went insane and started doing what she did uh she also seemed like a nice person before this all happened so some things i dislike about the room ripper is the fact that they uh take fetuses and babies away from their mothers you know that's that's super messed up uh another thing that's very that i don't like at all is the fact that so yeah the mask that you actually see her wear in the game is actually made up of the of the babies like it's made up of the skin of the babies like that's so messed up i i hate that that is such a terrible and horrible thing and also towards the end of the game you actually start to see uh dead bodies with with you know their their stomach cut open and presumably fetuses that are still there you know which is terrible that is terrible so next up we have dr edward sullivan from the glass staircase uh also the glass staircase by the way is coming out on consoles very soon it might already be on consoles by the time this video comes out this is all for all my console players and stuff so look out for that so one thing i like about dr edward sullivan is that he's very resident evil like to me uh he reminds me of william birking you know uh, just a regular scientist that kind of was a victim to his own science and just became this monster one thing i also like about him is that before prior to him becoming you know this villain or whatever uh he was actually helping soldiers recover from from war and stuff you know he seemed like a good dude he was actually helping people uh especially soldiers which is probably the people who deserve the most help and the, and the most you know attention and, and love also he actually tried to stop his own machine at the end of the you know that we see at the end of the game but obviously he wasn't successful so i do like that he actually kind of had a good heart you know so one thing i dislike about him is that i wish his boss fight was a little bit more complicated perhaps maybe there could have been some sort of puzzle elements added to the boss fight but for the most part it's just uh you know it's just you running around in circles trying to pick him off you know one bullet by one bullet which is uh i mean it takes a while it's 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 satisfying i guess whenever you do kill him but i just wish it was a little bit more complicated next up we have the easter ripper from murder house 
So one thing I like about the East Ripper is that he has a pretty complex backstory. I also like the way he looks. Very simple, very simple. Uh, that's all you need. You don't need no crazy stuff. He, he's just an Easter bunny and it's simple, but it's very effective. So some things I really dislike about um, the East Ripper is that he's very sadistic. Uh, I don't like the fact that he captures children and he does some really, really terrible stuff that I, I cannot say on here on YouTube, but I'm sure if you played the game and also if you look down, you know, towards the basement area of the game, you will see you will see bones and skeletons in very, very weird positions, which imply that he was a very, very messed up and deranged person beyond looking cool and stuff. He's for sure a piece of shit, you know? So next up, we have the nun from Nun Massacre. So I think this goes without saying the nun is a very classic puppy combo villain. I mean, you can't go wrong with the nun at all. This was one of the first villains or if not the first villain to become really popular within the gaming and horror space community. I said horror space. I just meant like horror community. And I also like how the nun is universally scary. Other other villains, you can kind of debate on how scary they are, but the nun genuinely truly is such a scary, you know, looking being. So some things I dislike about the nun, AKA Mother Apollonia, is the fact that she tortured and abused Jane. Jane being the daughter of the character that we actually play as in Nun Massacre. So yeah, the nun tortured and, and abused um, Jane, which eventually led to, to Jane, you know, offing herself. She humiliated her. She made Jane walk around in only her underwear and beat her with a stick for seemingly no reason at all. And she even shaved off her head and even did some things that I really can't even say here on YouTube. So such a messed up, uh, you know, killer. So finally, we have the Ding Dong Ditcher Ripper. So some things I like about the Ding Dong Ditcher Ripper is that they're one of the only villains where their name actually kind of makes sense. Uh, prior to becoming the Ditcher Ripper, they were actually just a regular person that just loved doing pranks. So it kind of actually makes sense why they have this name. So yeah, he was just a prankster who turned crazy. And I also like how there's like zero cure for him. If you play the game, Dr. Pleasant says that there's absolutely zero cure to, to help someone like him. Just, you know, just the fact that he's unsavable and stuff. So something I don't like about him is the fact that in game, he kind of just randomly appears out of nowhere without warning. And there's nothing you can really do. Uh, your first playthrough around, or if you've never watched the game, uh, he kind of just comes out of nowhere and he kills all the NPCs and stuff, which is, you know, there's nothing you can do. You got to restart, the, not restart, but you got to, you know, replay the chapter and stuff so you do better. So I kind of don't like how there's nothing you can do if you, you know, hadn't known that he was going to come. Pause. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I was basically just wanted to go over what I liked and disliked about every villain. I know there's probably going to be a ton of comments being like how some of my reasons are invalid, which is totally fine. Again, please, 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 please comment what you guys think about all of this. I would love to hear it. So, yeah, it's been your boy Blind uh, and I'm going to head out. Peace out, guys.